Hello, Catherine. I'm so like honored to meet you. So thank you for taking your time out to talk to, to talk to me today. Of course, of course. Thank you so much for for speaking with me. Um, I want to say first of all, congratulations on eleven Canadian Screen Award nominations, which is huge. And one of them is for best adapted screenplay. And I did see the video you put out, like how excited you were. But I wanted to get from you, like, what was that feeling like finding out you've been nominated for so many awards? Oh my goodness. Well, first off, I was really confused because I didn't know, I'm so new to the industry that I had no clue when the nominations were going to be announced. Yeah. I didn't know how they were going to be announced. Uh, and then so when we got their congratulatory email from our publicist, I was like, for what? What's what? What's going on? I had no idea. And I'm glad because I, I don't like knowing that there are nominations coming up because then it's like all this expectation comes on to that day, you know, and I, I, it was just, it was so thrilling. And so, because uh, we're, we're in the middle of moving, we're moving to, we just moved to Napanee um, to a rural home here. And uh, the entire place, like if I was to move my laptop just this way or that way, you'd see how, how uh, unkept this entire place is. It's complete chaos. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we had to just record a video. The, they just captured the fun of it all is that we were in our pajamas, just started doing like, you know, like our packing and renovations and all that stuff. And, mm -hmm. um, and uh, to find out that good news, it just, you know, we had, we couldn't delay it. We had to dance for joy. Yeah, that's so cool. Um, also, I, I happen to live in Scarborough right now and work in Scarborough. And watching the oh. film, I could see that it was a love letter to the community and to the town. And I wanted to know from you, what was the initial spark for you that was like, oh, I'm going to write a film about Scarborough or write a book about Scarborough? Well, it, I really wanted to capture a time that was really challenging in my life. And the fact that during those times of desperation, the thing that really grounded me was where were moments with people that really cared and supported me, yeah. you know, uh, and, and that, that was, that's, and you know, this, you know, me living in Scarborough is that, um, it's not the most beautiful place, like architecturally, mm -hmm. uh, it's what makes it so special are the people that are, that occupy that area. And then that's the same case with like a lot of low income communities all around the world, like these forgotten communities is that the, the one thing that we do have is each other. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I was really happy to see your name on the screen as author of the book and writer of the screenplay, because I feel like that gave me assurance of, like, I know that these, these stories and these characters are going to be handled with care because they're yours. What was the process of adapting your book like? Like, were there things that you really wanted to put on screen that you couldn't, or vice versa, things that you saw on screen that you're like, oh my gosh, this blows my mind. I could have imagined it. Well, you know, like, I think the number one thing is you have to understand that when you're adapting, it's a completely different art form. Mm -hmm. You can't make a book into a film. You can't make it to a film into a book. Like, you know, you can't, you just, but the story is the same. Yeah. You can't just imagine, you can't just like mold something. Like, for example, you can't take like clay and imagine that it's plastic or, you know, like you can't do those things. You just have to wear a different hat, understand it's a different art form and tell a story in that way, right? Mm -hmm. um, so this, the story here is just, we understand that it's about three children who are in a low income community in Scarborough and they're navigating some really difficult things for children and uh, if you stay true to that story it just means that the art form changes but the story is still going to connect the same way to the audiences right yeah. um, now that said it means that there are things in the book that can't be included um, there are um, there were certain characters that uh, sadly like you know like they could only be like a glimpse of themselves in the in the film and the truth is that that's okay. I don't think it's a bad thing. It's it's just that it means that in order for us to stay true to the story, it means that we have to let some characters go. Mm -hmm. And um, that way we can really dig deep into the lives of the characters that do remain. Um, and I think that, I think we've all seen that. Like we've seen adaptations where, where it falls short is when they try to really just stay true to the novel. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, you can't, you can't stay true to the novel, stay true to the story. And that's, yeah. that's what we did. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Something I loved about Bing's mom, Edna, was that she was so intentional about letting him know the different parts about him that she loved. So she'd be like, well, I love your, to your toes. I love your fingers. I love your eyes. Um, and I just love that she was so intentional about that. And I wanted to ask you, why was that so important for you to include in the story, that like, intentional love of his mother towards him? 
Well, uh, that's definitely a conversation that I had with a youth who was experiencing bullying. Was that there was a conversation about like what are the parts of your body that you love, um, and just like making it re a recitation, like a regular mantra, if you will, uh, saying like you know what do you love about yourself? What do you love about yourself? Uh, because I don't I don't think that many of us are told that when um, when we're facing uh, adversity is like, you know, how, how much do you love yourself in this, in this moment? And I wanted that conversation to be part of Edna's teaching to being is that he's never too much and he's never too little. And we can, you know, like, it, although that her parenting is, you know, it's obviously not common in the world, we can make it common because, and I can do what I want because I'm a writer, I can write it into being. And so I, uh, I really wanted to make Edna reality. And uh, I, I know, I know that there are other, there are single moms out there that that work this hard to make sure that their child feels loved. Mm. Yeah, that's really good. Um, something that you said, and I can even hear you saying now, is that the the big theme of Scarborough is community. And you said that in an interview. You said the film isn't just about Scarborough; it's about community. So mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you, what does community mean to you, and why is it so important to you? You kind of touched on that a little bit before about how the people make the place. Can you expand on that? Yes. Well, I think that community most definitely is. You have to remember that. Okay, yes, it's the it's the people. It's not not the buildings. It's not um, it's it's not the restaurants. Community is definitely the people, but it's also the uh, the ways that the people decide to interact with one another. So I feel I feel the most community when. I understand that the people that I'm interacting with, that they care about me and I care about them. We're open about that mutual respect mm -hmm. for each other's lives. And also uh, that we can have a uh, conversation, sometimes difficult conversations around how can, we can all have access, equal access to resources so that we can live and love peacefully on this land. I think mm -hmm. that, that that to me is community. Um, and. Uh, uh, but but definitely the conversation is a big thing because sometimes we can disagree about how to best support each other um, and it's it, those conversations are important um, so that that to me is community for sure mm -hmm. yeah something I've learned because I'm relatively new to Canada I've only been here for four and a half years um, and I'm new to Scarborough as well was something I've been learning through my work working with um, newcomers to Canada and also youth in the government housing neighborhood is that sometimes we have like these stereotypical ideas of people just by looking at them. And I think that even though in our minds we can be like, I know this is a stereotype, but also there's something about being in close proximity to people that gives you a new understanding of who they are. It helps you break yes. down those stereotypes. And I think yeah. film does that really well because it brings you close to people and characters that you may never meet in your own real life and kind of helps you break down those stereotypes if the film is done well. It helps you see them as humans and as individuals. And I think Scarborough also really does that well. And I want to ask you, how important was it for you to humanize these characters that maybe other people might look at and be like, from afar and be like, OK, they're probably like this or they're probably like that? Yeah, I mean, it's important because, like, you know, I, for, for me, for sure, creating the characters because it's it's important as a, an author to and as a screenwriter to have absolute compassion, even for the characters you don't like. You know, so for Corey, for example, it um, it's really important to have a lot of compassion for white, why someone becomes a white supremacist or joins any kind of hate group. Mm -hmm. uh, why why these parents who are put in such desperate conditions, why they have to make such difficult decisions. Uh, I, and so it was. I think it's really important too is to mention is that, um, it, especially when you're dealing with. Uh, people who are, you know, working class poor, is that you have to have a great amount of of care for these characters because uh, too many times people who are from uh, a, a a social class that's higher than them try their best to depict them, but with such a sense of pity, right. and I I. I I, feel, I I really wanted to make sure that these characters had their dignity. Mm -hmm. Is that yes, they are in such de desperate circumstances, but the metrics with which they are measuring success, which is you know like being able to um, find last minute care for your child before going to the hospital, uh, being able to get a meal for Christmas 
Eve. These are these are metrics that are different from people who are in like, you know, who are in higher classes than, than these folks, right? Yeah. And so you have to have absolute respect for those metrics. Mm -hmm. They're very different. And uh, not unless you've been in that situation, will you completely understand uh, what that success means. Mm -hmm. And you have to really feel that emotion, like, you know, like that sense of success. So when you, the successes, successes are happening in the film, I wanted the audience to understand that as well. The, like, like the, the units of measurement being so different. Yeah. Speaking of Corey, one of my questions was, he seems, he could be a character that we could antagonize, if you want to use that word, out of all the characters mm -hmm. in the film. But I think he represents a part of us or a part of society that maybe is not okay with letting people in or letting people see him as vulnerable or asking for help. What kind of advice would you give to someone like that, <clears throat> excuse me, who maybe might not have as drastic an effect as what his actions had, but is finding it difficult to let people in and see them as vulnerable in building that community? Wow, that's a great question. Uh, I would say that I, I would ask, I would want to ask this person, well, what if, you know, if Corey really existed and was sitting next to me, I would say, what was it about these particular hate groups that you felt a sense of belonging? And could you find that sense of belonging elsewhere? Mm -hmm. Because we understand, right, of that hate groups really target youth who are, uh, who feel that they're misfits in this world, right? right. Um, we definitely see that with like, you know, the incel movement, right? Is that, but but the truth is, is that, you know, if you look at people who were former incels, is that a lot of times the reason as to why they were able to become former incels is because they were able to find belonging somewhere else, mm -hmm. right? So how can you find that? And how can we as a society really create a create a world in which people can have a sense of belonging um, is, is something to consider too, right? Yeah. Um, and also, how can how can we um, value solitude? How can we value value softness, being wrong, mm -hmm. um, being corrected by people uh, like all of these things? Um, and also making sure that children have access to things so that they're not because um, a lot of times a big draw for these hate groups is access to resources that they can't get otherwise yeah. right mm -hmm. so um i i, I uh, so i would want i would want to know that from corey it's like you know like what can we get from you what what can we get you to make sure that you don't turn to uh, certain hate groups um for that comfort for those mm -hmm. resources yeah yeah that's a good answer. Um, was it difficult trying to humanize these different characters because there is such a, an array of different experiences in the film? So with okay. humanizing each person, did you find that difficult trying to tap into what their own experiences would be? You know what, you know, for the film, I really wanted to make sure it's okay. So I had to really humanize the actors. Mm -hmm. So the way the, um, the way that the script was written was that there were like these little windows of time in which I wanted to say, uh, actor improvises about this right. and really giving the actor the ability to just say what was on their mind and like, just like to say basically the general gist of the, like, the subject matter but in their own words. And there was something about that, that I, like, cause a lot of the actors have ne had never worked like that before because I, the, I love, love, love natural dialogue. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you can't really write that out. Like, especially children's dialogue, like kids really know what they're saying. And there are a lot of one-liners uh, from uh, the actor who is portraying Sylvie that I, I felt like Sylvie just spoke without mm -hmm. like, and it was beyond what the script was asking yeah. from them, you know? And I, I um, when you when you allow the actor to sort of, it, 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 for, for me, it's almost like as if like they're conjuring up this person, mm -hmm. right? In their bodies as an actor, you know? And I'm saying this like, you know, as a theater practitioner is that it really is like a spiritual connection to like this act, this, this, this being that exists on another plane, right? Um, if you allow the actor to be to to be held and respected like that, they're going to channel this other character, and then the, the, that character is going to come forth and become humanized, right? Yeah. And then, then there's also the other thing of you know these really difficult conversations with actors about 
you know, if there's like a class difference between the actor and the character is like having absolute respect for those people, mm -hmm. uh, you know, as, as they're portraying them. And, and thankfully, you know, with, with the people that we had chosen to be part of the team, um, a lot of them had personal connections to the people that they were portraying. So it, it didn't feel like that much of a leap. Right. Um, speaking of the kids, I think they did such an amazing job in this film. Like I was blown away by by their acting. They did so good. And I think something like kids just seem to have the ability to exude is is hope. Like even in the midst of the pain they're feeling, even while they're acknowledging the pain they're feeling, they still seem to have a sense of joy and hope. And so I wanted to ask, mm -hmm. what is what is your hope for this film, but also your hope for the community of Scarborough in general? Okay, for my hope for the film is that, you know, in, in true Scarborough fashion, I just want to make sure that everybody that was on this team, that all of the accolades that they're receiving now is just going to change their career. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, as we all know, a lot of actors, uh, they're really living hand to mouth. If you think about like all the theater that has been canceled because of the pandemic, um, and then even their Joe jobs being canceled because of the pandemic, like, I want them to make money. I want them to make a lot of money. I, I, uh, uh, I just, I want them to have good, stable lives. I want them to be thriving. Mm -hmm. uh, I want, and uh, that's what I want. I want us all to remember this movie that uh, just barely was able to be made, like just by the skin of its teeth was completed, like, you know, days before TIFF opened our, our film is that I, I, I want us to look back on it and just laugh. Uh, you know, it, I, I never, I would, I, although I want this sense of magic for them to experience it again and again in their careers, I hope that they never ever struggle financially the way that they, they did to make this film a possibility. Um, I, I, I just want them to be just sitting on it, just sitting on bills upon bills upon bills. Like I, I want that for them. Yeah. Um, uh, and then for the, for the people of Scarborough, uh, I'm saying this again and again, is that I really, uh, I, a hope that they get better transit. <laughs> I've been saying this for years. I mean, like, I am 44 years old. I have been living in Scarborough since I was 10 years old. And I, the buses are just as slow as they were when I was 10 years old. If there is any way that the transit can be any faster, that would be lovely because we, yes, we deserve a faster transit. We also deserve uh, better resources. Um, and uh, I, I hope that we become a priority to the powers that be because right now we are not. And it is shameful. It is shameful of uh, the uh, lack of resources and services in our area. Um, and that's because of race and class. We all know what that is, the reasons why. So those, that's, that's the hope that I have um, for our area. And, uh, and, yet, and yet, even though the, like, you know, the, with their improvements to our end of the city, I just want affordable housing. Because yeah. I, I, right now I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you from Napanee. It's the reason why we moved is because we cannot afford, we cannot afford property in Toronto mm -hmm. because of the ruthless housing market. And although while while I am very uh, honored to have the chance to own property, period, the end, the truth is, is that we could not afford in Toronto. It um, we it, this uh, it's it's been a heartbreaking thing having to leave my hometown, uh, but here it is. Um, is that the screenwriter and the author of a film can uh, cannot actually live in the place that uh, she calls home. Mm. And that's something to consider uh, is like, why is that the case? Uh, and how have our leaders failed us? Mm -hmm. yeah. One final question for you. I know that you said you come from a theater background and you're an author. Do you hope to do more films in the future, like writing more films, directing maybe? Uh, yeah, I'm we're already I'm already in the process of doing um, of of writing on a few television projects, mm -hmm. so that's lovely uh, because I think that um, and you probably feel the same way is that I feel like QT BIPOC folks, uh, I would really love to see more of us, um, not just on the screen, but I would also love to see more of us in charge of how the storytelling de is developed. Mm -hmm. um, 
uh, because I, I don't want, as I said before, I don't want the my experience in Scarborough to like Scarborough the film uh, to be unique. I would, I'm, I'm hoping that because you know we had like majority uh, brown and black uh, cast and crew and a majority f women crew. You know, I, I I want that to be the norm for mm -hmm. myself. <laughs> I mean, I want, I'm just gonna make it. Let's just do it. Let's just you know, like why not, right? Yeah. Um, and so, uh, and it makes a difference. It makes a difference when you have people uh, who have a seat at the table who look like us, um, and you can feel it in your body when, mm -hmm. like, you know, you're surrounded by people that are like you, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, about how a project is made and how the artists are respected. So yeah, it's just um, all of that is something that I, I'm, I'm looking forward to. And then um, as for film, um, yeah, I do. I want to do, I would love to do more adaptations for sure um, and more original work. Yeah, yeah. It's, there, there's, there's so many stories to tell and I can't wait to tell them. Yes, thank you so much for talking to me today, Catherine. I look forward to everything you're doing in the future. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for having me.